In Linux, there's two types of shells for your system. The first shell is your interactive shell. It's basically the shell that you see when you open up your terminal emulator. And then you have your system shell. This is usually the bin sh shell. This is going to be used by the shell scripts that you write and stuff like that. And a lot of systems use bash as the system shell. And there are, there are systems that use bash as the interactive shell by default, obviously. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the system shell. Now, if you're running Arch, Linux, or Fedora, then the default uh, bin sh will probably be bash. So if I do a read link of bin sh, you can see that for me it's set to bash. And for many Arch, Linux-based or Fedora-based distress, it's going to be same. And on Debian and Ubuntu, it's actually dash by default, and that's what we're talking about today. Dash or the Debian Armquist shell is basically a pretty modern POSIX compliant shell, system shell. So you wouldn't want to use dash as like an interactive shell because this is obviously not very usable. But uh, where you do want to use dash is in scripts. For example, I have the script here for my dot files, and you can see that for my scripts I'm using dash. Now the reason we're going to be using dash for scripts is because it's POSIX compliant. That basically means there isn't any extra bloat that comes with it. So for example, bash is actually a pretty bloated shell. Because as a uh, shell scripting language, it has all of these features that are not supposed to be there, right? Stuff like echo dash e. The dash e flag is not a thing in dash or POSIX compliant shells. It's just a bash system. And these uh, bash only things are called bash isms. Now the way you use the way you supposed to use a dash is symlink bin sh to be dash instead of bash. So if I do a read link right here, this actually currently set dash. Now, the reason I set this to dash was because in uh, most of my scripts, instead of just using like bin sh right that shebang, I actually just use user bin env bash which is the full path to bash right here so i have to convert all of my scripts into bash and after that i'll probably change bin sh into dash but for now this is what i'm doing and let's just go through this uh, set of scripts to show you how dash works now usually in bash you'll see this thing called it the uh, double brackets so if i go ahead and add an if statement here then in bash you can actually have these uh, double brackets but on dash the double brackets is not a thing or any POSIX compliant shell it's supposed to be just a single bracket so the double brackets is a bashism and then you also have another bashism which is arrays now you usually see arrays in an actual programming language like C but uh, the way it works on bash is that let's say this is a bash array and the way it works is that I can have a list of like you know a list of stuff right i can have like orange apple and banana and this is just a list of a list right so this is a bash array and this is actually not posix compliant because this is just a bash bashism it's a bash only thing and this doesn't exist on bash dash so what you do on dash is that you'd have something like this and that's how you replicate an array in dash it's pretty simple so uh, you can rewrite all of your scripts in dash when it comes to installing it it's just called dash in most uh, distribution repositories if you're on debian or ubuntu then you're lucky it's that dash by default and on stuff like fedora you can just do a sudo dnf install dash or on arch linux of course you do a pacman dash s dash and it should install it for you now once you install dash you can change to bin sh the way you do that is that you usually have to use a duas or sudo for this you do an ln bin sh into well actually we just uh, simulate bin dash into bin sh and that should work right so i'm not sure about that i'll leave the actual command in the comments uh, comments or description down below and you can actually just read in the arch wiki about this now the reason you would want to use dash over bash other than it's being POSIX compliant is the method it's way more faster than dash. 
So when you execute a bash script, then it is usually pretty uh, fast. So if I go to dot scripts bash, and I run let's say this themer script right here, which allows me to change my theme. Let's say I pick a hybrid here. Then it that does actually change my theme there. Well, it looks like it failed to do that, but it is pretty slow. Now I uh, compare that to my uh, dash rewrite of this theme script, which is actually way more faster. Now in the article it mentions that it's about four times faster, so that's pretty cool that it's four times faster. I can feel a little bit of speed in executing this dash rewrite, especially in scripts like this. So this is my uh, wallpaper picker. You can see that this script actually feels very fast on dash, although there usually isn't much of a difference. So you can just try this out if you want to. You don't really need to do it. But a dash bash is bloated and dash is a very POSIX compliant strict shell. And uh, you can use dash for all of your new scripts, right? You don't need to convert everything that you already wrote to dash. Or what you can do is just use dash for every new script you write. Because then you can s write scripts the proper way. Because when you're writing scripts the proper way, you're not supposed to use arrays or like these uh, double brackets, right? You're not supposed to do any of that. You, when you write a script, it's supposed to be POSIX compliant, stuff like that, right? And you want your scripts to be as fast as possible. And that is what Dash is about. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you later.